Hello my soccer universe, the field for Euro 2024 is complete, we know all the teams and yes I will need to buy another jersey because I have only jerseys for 23 of the 24 teams thanks to Georgia qualifying. Now while I would have liked Greece to qualify I also can very much live with Georgia as well for the simple reason that one of my favorite players from Serie A, Kvitscha Kvaske Lesna qualified as well and I think they make for a great story. And yes, the hunt for a Georgia jersey is on at the moment. The other team, Ukraine, is a team that I really wanted to qual qualify. I know Iceland were once everybody's darling, but I think Ukraine now, for obvious reason, I really want it. And I actually don't mind Poland uh, having qualified either. First of all, I have a colleague from Poland. She's definitely happy for that. Also, I think Poland will bring a whole lot of fans to Germany. Yes, they will be facing Austria as well and we'll talk about Austria in a sec. I feel that Austria should beat Poland, but Poland are probably a little bit of a rougher team than Wales, although Wales bring a whole lot of energy themselves. So overall, I think the playoffs, I think I'm all right with the way it went. Let's see about that. In this video, I will also give you my first full prediction now that we know all the 24 teams. Spoiler alert, not that much has changed for the simple reason that only Ukraine kind of messed up the projected bracket uh, going forward, but it's still interesting to uh, look at it uh, nonetheless now that we have a more complete picture. However, before we go all into Euro 2024, I actually want to talk about a few things that have actually happened on the international stage as well. First things first. The US defended the CONCACAF um, <laughs> Nations League title for the third time in a row. They win it all three editions, beating Mexico 2-0 after barely making it past Jamaica in the semi-finals. But still, they will always beat Mexico. They're always up for that. Uh, was a great uh, a goal by Tyler Adams in there as well. And Gio Reyna actually showed that he's a really, really good player when he plays with the national team. Also happy for Christian Pulisic captain and of course Milan player. So that is out of the way, that's why the US are hanging up there. Uh, from an Austrian perspective, we played two friendlies and they were rather, rather successful. I gotta say, uh, we had first the world record goal, Christoph Baumgartner scoring after uh, barely six seconds. Fastest ever international goal scored. It was weird in the game against Slovakia. Then it was kind of the, it was not a good first half after that world track record goal. But in the second half, Austria probably should have scored more than the one that got through Weimann. But then um, on the flip side, against Turkey, you play a very even first half. You score again an early goal this time only after 104 seconds. I mean that's really leaving it late uh, for now Austrian standards uh, through Schlager there. But Turkey were actually well in the play and gave them some trouble early on, got an equalized to Chalanoglu penalty, done so handball. And then you score right before the half through Gregoric and right after the half through Gregoric because the Turkish defense is completely unsorted and the goalkeeper who already didn't look good at the 2-1 didn't not look good there either. And then it just was one-way traffic from, from then on. Uh, you have two penalties. Uh, that make it 5-1 already. Um, curious was that uh, uh, before the penalty to the 5-1 that Baumgartner then uh, con converted actually Turkey had pulled one back but the penalty foul happened before. Why do we have VAR at friendlies? I don't understand. But hey, don't complain. Then late on Maxi Entro from Hartberg scores a six goal. It was pretty emphatic and Austria laying down a marker. However, that's now my personal zone, that's why I'm wearing Austria. Um, I think the international break, I really do not pay much attention to the friendlies. Uh, and you know, the England results were not all that great. However, I don't care too much about that because I know that England come the Euros will be a different beast. Uh, it is more that the impact of in, in interest to City players will might have on the Premier League. But clearly, uh, clubs take precedence there. Same thing, I think, for France who lose to Germany uh, and then get a um, you know, messy 3-2 win over Chile where they showed a little bit more. Uh, yes, it was two home games. You would expect better. But um, I'm not that worried about that because because you know you need to go looking into the tournament. Oh. Same goes for Spain, losing the one game against Colombia and then uh, only playing out the 3-3 draw with a great Dani Olmo goal uh, is not the results that Spain were hoping for, but 
I don't think it matters all that much. However, I think the international break mattered a whole lot for, um, I would say, two and a half other nations. First, the half nation is Italy, who went to America, beat Venezuela, beat Ecuador. Uh, good showing overall, giving a little bit confidence with all the trouble that was going on, you know, with the GRB, uh, racism scandal, blah, blah, blah. Um, Italy getting two wins. However, it's way, way more important for Germany and for Brazil. Brazil, Hendrik really announced him on the world stage, scoring the winner at Wembley, uh, really boosting the confidence for Brazil there. And then uh, getting a 3-3 draw in Madrid against Spain. Uh, again, Hendrik scoring uh, was probably a big result. Also, you got a little a little bit hard done by because there were two penalties given against uh, Brazil that were not so great. But I think Brazil kind of showing, yeah, we didn't get Carlo Angelotti, but maybe there's a strike up there. Maybe we can build on something. It might not look like vintage Brazil, but it might potentially turn out successful. Again, it's a lot of time, but going into the Cop Cop America Brazil, who looked a shambles last year, they all looked a whole lot better. But it definitely was for Germany a really, really important international break. Out of some of the Bayern players, out most of the Dortmund players. We rely now on Leverkusen, Stuttgart, uh, bringing back Rose. We have Gündogan in, in, in there. And suddenly it was clicking. I mean, Germany scoring after, I think it was seven seconds against Frost. So the world record for by Austria was set three hours earlier, <laughs> but Germany scored the second fastest ever international goal, also right off the kickoff uh, through Florian Wirtz. And it's just amazing that um, 150 years of international uh, soccer and the two fastest goals in history are scored within three hours of each other. Uh, shows a little bit the newfound, um, you know, confidence of these two uh, teams and I think Germany were really good for the win against France uh, played quite convincing there was not much coming from France it is really riding high of course Germans were asking themselves were we so good or was France that bad I think the truth is probably somewhere in in the middle but suddenly whatever Nagelsmann tried to do seems to make sense and then they bounced back yesterday wearing down against the Dutch a Dutch team that was not convincing in the phone it'll be Nova Scotland um, 1-0 down, but they turn it around and win 2-1 and suddenly Germany look like, yeah, this might be a dangerous team going into the Euros. There is some newfound confidence there. Looking forward to that. So this was basically in the international break for a few big nations. And may I just mention the kit matchup for France against Germany. Brilliant. That's all I want to see. This is the type of kit matchup I really want to see looked absolutely brilliant let's go into the playoff finals uh we, i want to start billy c george against greece um i did not want to stereotype greece as playing it out nil nil and then winning on penalties but that's almost what we got the game was tedious to watch Greece just kept it tight. There was no impetus going forward from Greek side and Georgia does not really have the means. Yes, they have quick players and try to hit on the counter, but they also don't want to risk too much. And so the game was not very, very good. There was one chance just before the halftime. Then there was uh, first <laughs> the first period of overtime where it was the most exciting minute the last five minutes where first uh, Mavro Panos hits the crossbar um, and then um, also commits an error that resulted in a really good chance for Georgia unfortunately then the break had to come and again it went into kind of stalemate mode as I said Greece was probably very solid on the back however more danger always seemed to come and more initiative always seemed to come from Georgia uh, Greece always went very physically also on Kvaratskhelia uh, which definitely didn't help the game at all he himself had to come off so uh, in the 109th min minute uh, injury so you kind of felt yeah is there really the the star players off can Georgia pull this off well they did I mean it goes to penalties they win both coin tosses it is played in front of the Georgia fans although I'm not sure if this is always an advantage however they go first and Kokorashvili converts the first penalty and Pakaseta sees his one saved 
and that already hurt Greece a whole lot. Uh, David Ashville makes it 2 0, however, Mazuras pulls one back, and then Mika Datze puts it wide. Uh, at that point, I really think this could have swung because uh, Buchalak is uh, equalizes for for Greece, and then a really important one for Georgia, Dvali converts to make it 3-2, and then Duke Jukamakis puts it wide left, and then Kvekeskiri can convert and scenes. Let's put that with scenes in Tbilisi, in the Dynamo Stadium. Uh, Georgia qualify for the first time for the Euros. Huge sensation. It has to be said. Uh, huge result. And as I said, this Georgia team, I'm not saying they're world class team. They've never finished better than second last in any of their groups. They were not in any danger of qualifying from the group with uh, Spain, Scotland uh, and Norway. However, due to a good performance in the Nations League, which is also true for Greece, they could make it in there. On the other side, Greece also, I mean, yes, they finished in a relatively safe third spot, probably closer than Georgia uh, to qualifying, but in a group with France and the Netherlands was also going to be tough. Um, it's a chance missed for Greece. However, I hope that for Greece, uh, the recent resurgence, you know, qualifying for League B, that this might result finally in a qualification for Greece again. However, I really would want that Greece get away from their old uh, self kind of where they are only defensively sound nil nil and then you win it on penalties. I think this Greece squad can play much better and much more should be expected from them. Then Ukraine against Iceland. That, that was the best match and it had so many different uh, phases. I mean I think that in the opening phase, opening half hour Iceland were better in the, in the game and the uh, individual effort that allowed Gudmundsen in the 30th minute to give it 1-0, it was fully deserved at that point. However, then Ukraine woke up, created a few chances, had an equalizer in the 30th, 30th minute, called off for offset by Yaremchuk. Um, was a little bit unlucky, but if you saw the, re the, the replays, um, yeah, it was probably offside uh, already there. But then uh, early in the second half, Tsigankov pulls, uh, uh, makes it 1-1, it is level, then Ukraine really were pushing up until I would say around the 75th minute, uh, you know, when Yaremchuk came off and Dovbik came on, the game was then suddenly, Iceland had some chances again, but maybe that just opened it up that Sudakov already had assisted the first goal, sets of Mudrik and Mudrik uh, from long range, makes it 2-1 and Ukraine again come back to win. So it's a second comeback win after Bosnia for Ukraine. They booked their place. I am very pleased, A, for obvious political reasons, Ukraine being there sends a good signal, but, and it's very good for this war-torn country, um, but it also, I feel it's right because they were the strongest team in all these qualification tournaments. Uh, they had a shout, I think, against it Italy, probably should have gotten a penalty, that would have seen them through, so Ukraine that's all right to me. And then we had Wales against Poland. And here is also, I mean, uh, if I look purely at the qualification campaign, I think uh, Wales probably would have deserved a little bit more, you know, uh, getting four points off Croatia uh, in their group. I think they were in a group also with Turkey. So uh, Wales were relatively close there, where Poland really messes up, especially getting only a single point against Moldova. Uh, so what what gives on the other side poland based on the nations league were the better seats so uh were the higher seats so playing away from home yeah yeah i was i knew this is the op group opponent for also austria i knew it's either one of these in either case i was actually i said it's fine given the form that austria's in both will be tough opponents not easy outs but you should beat them both there's a little bit more star power on the Polish side. And I have to say, Wales went very energetically in there. Uh, it was not as bad of a game as the one between Georgia and Greece. You could see those are two better sides, but uh, chances did not happen. And if they were happen, especially in the first way, it was more on the Wales side who also had, uh, just before the half, an uh, opening goal um, by Ben Davies uh, disallowed. Yes, it was an offside. But I all of us felt that Poland held their own there. The longer the game went, the more I felt that Poland uh, letting their class shine through. And you know, you have a Lewandowski, but you also have a Zalewski uh, from Roma in, in there who provides a whole different level of course, Zielinski and so on. So I think this is not a bad Poland team over, overall. I always wonder about coaching, if there would, would be a more progressive coach in there. 
it really Poland late in the game and then especially in the second half of extra time uh -huh, were really putting the pressure on Wales were hang hanging on they get then a uh, late red card which was based in stoppage time of, uh, of overtime, which didn't, didn't matter, but uh, the goal didn't wanna come. Um, but it also has, as has been said, that probably the better chances in the game itself, especially the first 90 minutes, fell to Wales. I mean, uh, there were a few saves that uh, Chesney had to pull off, uh, especially from Kiefer Moore. But penalties were unavoidable. Uh, this time around in front of the Wales fans, where Poland win the toss uh, who, and choose to go first, and the two captains convert the first two penalties. Lewandowski is typically fashion, Ben Davis just down, down the middle. Uh, but then Szymanski, not so convincing, but he went in, Kiefer Moore via the crossbar. That was the first uh, really convincing one, but then Frankowski and Harry Wilson. It is 3-3. Zalewski steps up. You feel a little bit, but Weathers the storm, makes it 4-3, Nico Williams, 4-4, and Zsistov Piontek. Uh, I actually thought he might miss, but with some calm confidence. I mean, yes, this has been some time that he has been a great player, but he converts and then uh, Daniel James sees he's saved by Jesny, and it is Poland who go through. And I think a lot of Polish fans will like the short ways to Germany. They play, for instance, the second game uh, against Austria in Berlin, which is basically right on the doorstep. Uh, both the games that Austria are playing in Berlin against the Netherlands and against Poland, it will be away games. <laughs> that, much, that much is certain. I would think that in Dusseldorf against France, you might get more fans there because I don't think French fans travel all that well. That completes now. The group stage, at the group stage, we have the full draw. We see Poland go, France, Austria, Netherlands. We have Ukraine in a group with Roman Romania, Slovakia, and Belgium, where I th you would think you see the bars, uh, they are second ranked there. So you would think that Ukraine uh, could finish a second place there. And Georgia, of course, is outside in a group with Portugal, Turkey, and the Czech Republic. If we look now, projected group standings. Uh, we see Group A, Germany, Switzerland, uh, ahead of Hungary, and Scotland only fourth. But I think those three behind Germany are relatively close. Germany we can feel a little bit more confident about now. Group B, of course, remains kind of the group of death, although Croatia being finishing third here will probably qualify as well. Group C, England, Denmark, Serbia, Slovenia. I actually think Slovenia a little bit over... Uh, looked, whereas Denmark and Serbia, you never know what you get from them. Group D, I think this has to be now considered probably the true group of death. I mean, France and Netherlands are big names, but I think Austria with the Kirkhoeker form is a really strong team, and Poland has the star power there. I think this is a much more even group than the one between Spain, Italy, Croatia, because Albania is a rank outsider there. So uh, I think a pretty good team, team that could actually make a quarterfinal will go out in, the, in this group. Uh, then the Two groups that really are not that exciting. Belgium will finish ahead of Ukraine, Roma Romania and Slovakia. Well, I was say Romania for some <laughs> reason. And then Portugal ahead of Turkey, the Czechs and Georgia. Given that it's a tough group, Austria is only the third, the, the last third place team, which does hurt a little bit. I still think that in this group, Austria can finish second. Uh, I really think the Dutch are there to be had. But in any way, uh, Croatia, the Czech Republic, Hungary, and Serbia are projected to move on out of this group, which sets up the following bracket. And you see it, Ukraine are in there. However, they are scheduled to be eliminated by the Netherlands or, or early on, who then will play Portugal. Spain against Germany in a quarterfinal in Stuttgart sounds interesting, I would have to say, but I think even Germany against Denmark is already a quite an interesting one. The Germany's path is not that straightforward, I would say, because you would, uh, if you want to make, make to the final, you would have to play Denmark, neighbor, always a tough opponent. You have to play Spain, you would have to play Portugal on the uh, on and then you would have to play potentially France in the final. The lower part of the bracket, you see Belgium, Croatia. Belgium is favored, but we had this at the World Cup and you know, Croatia always can do something. France against Turkey, also not that straightforward for France. Uh, although Turkey just lost against Austria, CX-61 is a, a Turkey team not to be over, over, overlooked and Turkey team that actually got some points of France not too long ago. England should be big favorites against the Czech, Czech Republic and Switzerland, Italy. Yeah, that's a game that the Italians would not like. Yes, it would be then England against Italy, where 
That's a matchup that England would not like because it's a replay of the final and Italy usually has the better hand uh, against England, except in qualifying. So yeah, we'll see that. Belgium against France is a nay, name I would favor France, of course, and England and France, the two best teams in the tournament, as you see by the ratings, meet in the semis. And then it would be France against Spain to be expected. However, how does it look for overall favorites? France ahead of England, then Spain, Portugal, Belgium, Germany. I want to cut it there. I don't think that Italy and Netherlands are good enough. Croatia, they are all outsiders. If Austria make it out of their group, and this is the big one. I mean, you see, they are only uh, the round of 16 column. They only have a 55% chance of qualifying, which is one of the lowest in this column. Uh, that's what's hurting them. Otherwise, uh, if Austria make it out of the group, uh, look out. I think they could cause some noise. I would favor them against Ukraine. And then you play against Portugal team where probably you're overmatched. But I think if they make it out of the group, I would say quarterfinals for Austria are in there. The first matches at Euro, I give you the first uh, match day for Euro uh, 2024 as well. It starts, of course, with Germany against Scotland. Uh, it's kind of a weird schedule, especially the Austria group. Uh, you have Poland against Netherlands on the 16th of June. It's the early slot. And then you have in the late slot on the 17th of Austria against France. So it's a little bit weird there. Um, I'm a little bit, you know, all Georgia qualifying. Great, great for them. Great story. But this could have been Turkey against Greece. What a match. So it will be, I think, uh, all Turkey. This will be a Turkish Westfalen st stadion, I'm pretty sure, as well. Uh, but I think of the early games, Spain, Croatia is the one that definitely sticks out. So that was it from me from Euro qualifying. I'm really pumped for this tour tournament. And it was great to have an international break, a little bit of a break from uh, now the leagues as, as well. It was a little bit more of a lenient schedule now. We're all ready for the end of, of the season. We have the title race in the Premier League. We have Champions League coming up. We have Europa League, which I think is even more exciting. It's all now getting the hot phase before we reconvene in mid-May, early June to talk about the international uh, internationals again going into Euro 2024. Also, we have the Copa America coming up any case, please let me know what you thought about qualifying games, the friendlies uh, and, and, and so on. Who do you think will win Euro 2024? The one thing that's my final thought here, while we have France and England being the big favorites, uh, I think the last time that the big favorite won was in 2012 and that was Spain. We have two sort of surprising winners uh, from before and I think that the field is relatively open. Because every team in Europe on the top, it's tight. It's a rather tight tournament. I'm not sure if it will be a great tournament. That's also, but we'll see about that. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.